Who wants to play an impromptu toss ball match? No one? Really? You see we had a conveyor pull in? Soft, sour, candy shell around a sweet purpleberry flavored scent. So, how's this work? Interrupt your we can get a table, stand in a corner. Do you have what it takes to defend your corporate township from the dangers of alien? That maniac on Monarch still screaming into the comms void. Getting real sick of Talk it. Talk to your local manager about applying for military training. I'm not feeling so your well. life to protecting our wonderful brands and products. Military service does not guarantee full employment rights, tax breaks, military discount, health benefits, military burial, participation medal, training, or weapon. Seeking relief from the heat? Till June Lay gets those radiators fixed, I've got the next best thing. I hear tell some folk down in the townships are getting offered early retirement. Who'd think of such a thing? What would you do with all the time? What ain't I got? Okay, so what are we drinking? You're the expert. Oh, and don't worry on the price. I got this. Let's just do it proper. Oh, no, that's just, that's on account of my not being able to sleep lately. Makes my hands all twitchy, you know? I've just been lying awake, thinking about what June Lay said, and I feel my heart shake. Oh, beer. I guess, yeah, I can do that. Beer can be good. I bet. Bottoms up. Welcome to a favored pastime of the common masses, Ms. Holcomb. I myself don't imagine you'll care for the flavor. Ah, this tastes like the underside of a boot. People drink that for fun? Oh, Captain, I'm pining for June like something fierce. What am I doing? I know you mean well, so I'll try not to take that comment personal. I can't think of a single time you have taken something personal, Ms. Holcomb. Truly, it is your hidden strength. Thanks. I think. I don't know what to do about... us. Well, she talked about another girl, right? Isabel. Mentioned her by name and everything, like she wanted me to know. Maybe I've been making a right fool of myself this whole time. Maybe she's not interested after all. It was real long and rambly. She was telling me a story about her dad, how a lady named Isabel did all sorts of things to try to win his favor. This Isabel lady never quite managed to get her dad's approval, but they carried on anyways. Made something good out of a bad situation. Then it all went down the tubes. Do you think June Lay still has feelings for her? I just got a lot of feelings, Captain, and they're all climbing up my throat. I, I need another drink. Right now. Before I lose my nerve.
Come on, Captain. I'm here to drink. Okay, maybe you're right. I am a little woozy. Hydration, here I come. Good call. It's best to proceed with a light hand the first time. Shush you. Oh, Captain, I want to talk to Junlei all the time. Even about silly things, but I'm so scared. Um, everything? I got a solar system's worth of terrifying questions swirling around my head. Does she think I'm as pretty as I think she's handsome? What if she doesn't like me? What if she does? What if she's still got feelings for that lady, Isabel? What if we, we get together and she gets bored of me? There's nothing easy about... about spilling your guts to the person who's got your heart in their hands. You know I'm not interested in physical affection. That's... Well, it's tripped folks up in the past. Folks I thought cared about me for me. What if she's not okay with that? What if she is, but then later, she's not? What do you mean, Captain? So if I'm doing my very best to be kind and open-hearted, I shouldn't worry how she thinks of me? Gosh, I don't know that I got that in me. Sometimes I feel real mean inside, Captain. I think... ungenerous thoughts. I don't want to be that person. Don't want to be cold. I want to bring light to June's life. Well, Captain, this has been... This has been a whole lot. I got just... Wow. So much to think about. Do you think I should ask her on a... date? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna ask June out. Just as soon as we get back to the ship. I mean, probably. Eventually. Thanks for hearing me out and giving me counsel. And, well, for being a friend. It means a whole lot. You're good people, Captain. Well, it's not like I could be elsewhere. Nor am I capable of neglecting a wayward lamb in need of guidance. Huh. All right. Thank you, guys. You're real good friends, you know that? I wish... I wish there was a place we could all live quiet together. Come on, let's go. Step lively in this way. I'm not winded. Honest. My, uh, boot was untied. Would hate for you to get left behind, or architect forbid, become lost.
Hey, that pad down there. Warning, intruders will be... Oh, it's you. Hey, Captain. I hope I wasn't too much bother at the bar. I did have fun, and I tried some things I never would have otherwise. And I don't feel it today. I guess that water must have worked. I'm glad I had you looking out for me. I wouldn't mind having a drink again. Someday. In the distant future. Anyway, I messaged Jun Lei when we got back and she replied super quick. <clears throat> okay. I was awake half the night thinking about what I sent, anxious to see what you said. I reread my message in the morning and it was unclear. I was drinking when I sent it, otherwise, I wouldn't have had the courage. Also, sorry for the typos. Oh, she called mashed potatoes, smashed potatoes. But I think maybe that's just what they call them on Groundbreaker. I've ruined things in the past because I didn't say things I should have, like I've met someone who's become special to me. I want to be honest with her, so if she feels the same about me, there won't be any surprises. Like one of those two-bit romances where one soul's all stiff and formal and I should be glad to perhaps take hold of your hand, miss. I ought to go write her back. I mean, I already did. Twice. <laughs> but anyhow, thanks for taking me out, Captain. Heard from the lasses down on 22 that you did a contract for Sublet. Rito spent your vodka after Taste the Rainbow. Have you seen this man? Reward offered for information leading to the capture of noted terrorist Phineas Wells. Report any sightings to your local war entity. Who the? Hey, McRed, were you expecting any company? A neighbor from above approaches our realm. Ba Look at this ripe piece of meat just sizzling on the grill. <laughs> yum, yum. Time to feed the flames. It's nothing personal. Promise. Is this what carbon monoxide poisoning looks like? I don't think this deck is too well ventilated. Uh, speaking for myself, Captain, I am not of a mind to be murdered by a psychopath who plays with fire. You came with the crew. 
Welcome. We got plenty of space to spread out, but only room for one captain. I know this ain't a toy, neighbor from above. It's a catalyst, just like me. Keep talking. I like the sound of your voice. That's right, sir. Just the parts. We'll be in and out in a jiff. You won't even know we were here. Tennyson just keeps feeding the furnace, don't she? We're still playing with her last sacrifice out back with the crew. We were just sitting in a circle, sucking down exhaust fumes and toasting to the memory of our brain cells. Making this broken angel fly again. You don't just ask a king for a favor when you're standing in his court. You bring tribute, sacrifices, prophecy, shit like that. Under its skin, this ship is all poison and darkness. Lead bones, asbestos muscle. Maybe you're right. You've got the run of the kingdom. Up those stairs, you'll find the parts. My crew won't get in your way. Smells kind of like old Bess's outflow pipes. You get that automatic patch? My cred wants it up and running. I'm trying to think of a good name before I wake it up. Don't give it a name. What are you thinking? It hasn't got a heart? It's not like us. Can you imagine being frozen for ten years, sailing through space in a room such as this? I'll keep quiet. You're the first person I've seen who talked their way past McRed. That may not sound like much, but take my word for it. Wow. June Lay sent me down to collect the parts we need to fix the radiators. McRed got me all distracted sucking fumes and <laughs> talking about the cosmos. Youth these days have no principles. I can't tell if you brought friends or if I'm still seeing things, so maybe I ought to lay off the fumes and head back to work. I'll get back to my post. See you topside, stranger.
Red gave me a taste of the good stuff. I'm interested in it. Join McRed's crew. I guess I'm up. We got another complaint. People don't like worms. Aw, they're just killing the soil. Besides, they're my friends. Find a new friend. This worm fixation is screwing with our bottom line. This place is falling apart. Please as pie when we show her these. You've returned, and in one piece. Color me impressed. Good work. I'll take those. I need you to head through the large door at the far end of engineering. Take the elevator down into the machinery shaft. There's a terminal in the back. Activate it when I call over the ship's PA. And bring weapons. There's a slight mantipillar infestation. More than a few. Less than a hive. Nothing you can't handle. We were salvaging parts from a ship. Turned out there were eggs inside. They got into the radiators, and here we are. Don't worry, Miss Junlei. We'll be super gentle with the ship. You don't got a thing to worry about. I mean, aside from fires and such. I'm genuinely heartened to hear that. Thank you.
Soldier on the back of the machinery shaft area. Keep clear of the radiator. You don't need to kill the mass killer. tells me the security mechanicals booted up and killed a bunch of mantis. Bad news. Diagnostic says their circuit boards are fused from the heat, so they're not too picky about who they kill next. Sneak past if you can. Shoot back if you need to. I can always fix them later. System. Beginning security patrol. Watch out!
That's the terminal. I have the parts in position on my side. Go ahead and cycle the droplet pumps. And if you don't know what that means, just look for a command that says, cycle droplet pumps. Interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. Remember anti- My boards are returning to green. What a weight that is off my shoulders. I don't normally tolerate outsiders mucking about in my station's guts, but you're all right. The temperature should be dropping as we speak. I'll see to it the crew knows who kept us all from boiling alive. If you've got time, I believe Edna has a comms issue that could use your attention. I've also authorized Doc and Furu to sell you our premium meds.
VNP forced to bake beans. When you need to eat Are you lunch, listening to me, Emperor? You can't keep me out of there. Please don't make a scene, Dr. Fenhill. I'm sorry. Am I causing a scene? See, Umfuru? We could have avoided all this unpleasantness if you just let me talk to Jesse in the first place. Let me get one thing straight. Jesse and I are not friends. I just owe her, okay? As for the rest, I'm trying to figure that out. All I know is that she's been here too long, and she's apparently not receiving visitors. You say that like it's weird. I just don't like to leave a debt unpaid, that's all. Be my guest. If you know something I don't about dealing with hospital bureaucracy, I'll be impressed. Uh, hello. June Lei called up from engineering, said I should let you buy medical supplies from our stores. Now, is there something I can help you with? If only my other patients had so many inquiring after them. I'll tell you what I've told the others. The records say Ms. Doyle checked herself in and requested I admit no visitors. The requests of our patients are paramount, so no, you may not see her. She's not my patient. I'm certain no one on my staff would falsify patient records, if that's what you're implying. Take care. Can't say I've seen you before. I take it you're a freighter, Captain? If you're here to better yourself, you'll have to wait. We're having a spot of trouble with our delivery service. Sure is. You need a deft hand to straighten a busted nose or... Sparkle up those not-so-pearly whites. I'm your gal. Of course, there's not much cosmetic improvement going on at the moment. Not without my mechanicals. Where the law is, Irian, anyway? I'm expecting our delivery fellow to stop through with medical supplies and service auto mechanicals. Name's Captain Irian. A brave idiot with a penchant for getting himself delayed. Sometimes by dates, usually by bandits. Surgery mostly. Medical personnel are difficult to come by on Groundbreaker. The board won't let their doctors and nurses station here, and they own all the medical schools. If we can't hire their people, we can't hire anyone. Everyone on staff here on Groundbreaker was trained by me or Idris. We're good, don't get me wrong. But we've only two heads between us, and we don't know everything. I'd be grateful if you'd spare the time. We need his delivery soon as yesterday. Last he told me, he was taking a shortcut by Scylla, an asteroid in the Charybdis Cluster. That's where I'd start, were I the adventuring type. You look out, though. The place is probably crawling with outlaws.
You ever wonder if maybe this was raised for a reason? For the last ratchet on rotten time, leave me in peace! You hull-headed quacks do know that restful recuperation requires not being disturbed, don't you? What? Why? Everything's fine. We're all fine here. No need for her to be worrying her pretty little head about me. I'm just terrible, dreadful sick is all. Got a cough that won't quit and sores all over my body. Highly, lethally contagious. But I'll be fine, so long as I'm left alone. Criminy. She really ain't gonna drop this, is she? Alright, okay. We can discuss this like the level-headed folk that we are. Seems I've got to do something before Ellie goes jabbering my business to anyone with one ear and an intent to listen. The truth is, I'm not sick. But if you repeat what I'm about to tell you to anyone, I will deny it with my dying breath. You, uh, ain't with the board, are you? See, I owe them. A lot. I might have missed a payment or two, and the other night I swear someone was following me back to my room. So, I hold up here to lay low. What? No, I didn't do anything. I'm a law-abiding denizen of this ship, I swear. Think? No. I recognize a contracted killer when I see one, thank you. In my line of work, that's a skill you develop during week one, assuming you want to keep breathing. All right, I'll fess this part up too, if it means you'll help me. I'm a thief. I specialize in particularly high-end and historically valuable items. Three weeks back, I caught rumor that the Blood Tear Diamond, last worn by an heiress on the Lost Hope, had surfaced for the first time in 70 years. If I had, you think I'd be hiding out in the med bay? I was gonna steal it, lined up Udom as my buyer. He paid half up front to finance the operation. Let's just say things went sideways about the time I got my hands on the diamond, and it crumbled to stardust in my palm. Anywho, I barely made it out with my life and nary a plan to make back Udom's deposit I'd spent. Udom Bedford's the board guy on the station. He'd know how I stand with them. If you can square things for me, I'd owe you one even bigger than Ellie owes me. Thanks for helping me with the board. You're a real pal. Or I guess I should say, Ellie is one, huh? News. How do you do? Huh. How might I assist you? Miss Doyle owes the board a significant sum. Alas, the only collateral she has is her organs. Compulsory donation is quite legal in such cases. That's not unreasonable. I guess it's better than losing your organs, but... I don't know, Captain. It just doesn't seem right. Miss Doyle is deeply in debt, and the board has every right to do whatever they like to recoup that debt. What guarantee do I have that she'll agree to the terms you negotiate? I quite concur. It's refreshing to deal with someone practical for a change. I will recall my collection agent. Tell Miss Doyle to report to me promptly for her first assignment. Now, is there anything else you need, or...
Can I return to my work? Wish I could say it was good to see you, Ellie. At least you finally got your chance to square our debt. That the good news came through the wireless. Looks like you paid my debt to Jesse. I guess that means I owe you now, right? Tell you what, I'm a little short on bits at the moment, but I'm a decent scrapper and a better than average sawbones. If you're looking for a medic, I can work my debt off. If I'm being honest, and I prefer not to, I was about ready to pick up another contract anyway, and you settled this in a pretty tidy fashion, which tells me you're competent. But we can say I'm repaying the favor if you prefer that version. You won't be sorry, though it looks like you've got a full roster already. Time to play favorites, Captain. Traveling in style, are we? I'll be sure to nab a cabin with a view. Dr. Fenhill, glad you opted to join us. It'll be good to have a Sawbones on the crew. Now see here, I'm... What? Rizzo's Mock Apple Cider. A hard cider for a hard life. My dad taught me some French, you know? Stuff about omelets and, uh, fromage. I could take a look at that journal. By all means. I would be astounded, yet astronomically in your debt. Oh, yeah, there's nothing at all about eggs and cheese in here. Sorry. Very helpful. Thank you.
What's that noise? Coming. What do you think you're doing? Incoming! Does it? There it is. Just yank the drive, and I'll do the rest. Now that we have the data cartridge, I can finally find out where that scholar I'm looking for ended up. Got it. His name is Reginald Cheney, and he joined a sublight salvage crew. Only he's not listed on the return manifest. Must have made landfall somewhere he wasn't supposed to. Ah, uh, yes. Here. There's a domicile on Monarch in Fallbrook, rented to the same bitcart he used to buy his seat on the salvage ship. I should have guessed. What better place to lay low if you wish to avoid the authorities? Oh, it's nothing. I suppose I really didn't have much faith in actually finding him. Was a bit of a long shot, wasn't it? I admit it was a bit of a long shot, but when you've spent as many hours as I have in contemplation of the universe's secrets, you sometimes get a sense for these things.
had a question about your plan, Mr. Vicar. Of course. The cosmos is generated and directed by the universal equation, also known as the grand plan. By contemplating the teleological order of things, one can achieve verity. Oh, um, right. You had a question? Never mind. That about answers it. Gracious. I was just sitting down for tea. Yes, dearie? Any time, sweetheart. You know where to find me. Here, take a candy with you. It's almost time for today's episode of The Chairman's Children. Care to listen with me? What do you want, then? My hard-earned wisdom? That's right, dearie. The only independent station in the colony. That's us. Though for how long, I can't say. That all depends on Miss June Lay. The board can't abide a community that won't bend to its will. Go right ahead, sweetheart. Ask the common folk, and they'll tell you it's on account of all the monsters on Monarch desperate to gobble you up. Because that's what the board tells them, you see. I think they made some fool mistake that would make them look bad to the rest of the colony, and they're trying to hide the evidence. Those board folk are real prideful-like. Never want you looking behind the curtain, lest you see their dairy airs. But old Gladys knows the score. The whole colony's not much more than a diorama, showcasing one board screw-up after another. That's why we gotta keep them from getting their grubby mitts on Groundbreaker. She's our mess. Probably. Every once in a while, we get these snippets of radio chatter. Edna shows them to me. Some man hooting and hollering about the light in us all. Claims he's transmitting from Monarch. But who knows if that's true. Might be true. Might be some new trick from the board. Oh, a little of this, a little of that. I buy and sell items that require discretion to dispose of. Knickknacks. Curios. I also knit throw pillows stuffed with the hair of famous tossball players. But that's more of a passion project. What about non-famous players? I earned quite a reputation as a fifth back during my penitentiary, uh, seminary days. You do have a favorable mop, I must say. But that's not what you wanted to talk about, is it, dear? Anytime, sweetheart. You know where to find me. If you're here for this week's magazine club meeting, you're a touch late. Won a charming copper kettle off that girl who runs the pub. She's a fierce arm wrestler, but she's no match for your pal Gladys.
Rizzo's knock you out ball. A Hey, Mr. Vicker. Did you ever get a little bit homesick for Edgewater? That ocean stink. No, I do not. You're supposed to say yes and go on to explain why. I just want to have a conversation. <laughs> of course you do. It's Halcyon Dune. We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. Some townships have asked Halcyon News to make a statement regarding rumors of food shortage. Rest assured, the far-sighted corporate leaders of Halcyon have tailored their product lines to be selective to the refined customer. Scheduled scarcity. Rizzo's epic slap. Slap your whole family tonight. <laughs> CNP near maple syrup. It's near this complete breakfast. Sublight salvage. Their front looks surprisingly on the up and up. Do you reckon we can shop here, or is it all spoke for? I've seen you limping a bit. You all right, Mr. Vicker? Need us to slow down? What are you implying? I am perfectly fit. My uh, knee is just acting up. Welcome to Sublight Salvage and Shipping, a legitimate business for legitimate consumers. You the one flying the unreliable? Sure you are. Miss Lily has been expecting you. I'll unlock the door. Sure am. A few years back they got me started on simple acquisitions. You know those latches they put on cargo bays ain't worth a damn? These days, I stick to HQ and look after Miss Lilia. So you're the new captain in town. I was hoping you'd make your way to my office. Saves me the work of hunting you down. Lilia Hagen, CEO and Executive Director of Aggressive Operations. I'm guessing you already know about Sublight, otherwise you wouldn't have come. A little advice. Before you start telling lies, get a feel for who you're talking to. It's nice to see the Unreliable again. A useful ship. Hawthorne was my contractor. I'd recognize that leaky boat of his anywhere.
I have a salvage job for someone light on corporate ties with a reliable set of wings. But there's a catch. Just like in the serials. If you have a nav key to Stellar Bay, the job's yours. Interested? First, an embargo that's been active ever since the board pulled its forces off-world. Few regulations, plenty of freedom. And second, all the goodies that no one had time to pack. I like that initiative, but ease back on the throttle. Gladys at the rest and go might have what you need. If there's anything else, be quick about it. Time is bits. These days, the scrap business all but runs itself. Gives me the time to expand our interests into other sectors, where I can let my hair down. Our field is persuasive acquisitions. At least, that's how my legal advisors tell me to phrase it. Not all of our salvage is abandoned when we find it. Sometimes it takes a polite conversation and a shot across the bow. You know, legal formalities. Your words, not mine. Very. I have this thing about numbers in spreadsheets. Grids in general. I like to think of myself as the last honest businesswoman in Halcyon, but I'll settle for being the most organized one. Hey. Careful with the C word around here. I like to keep things above board, and that kind of talk only makes trouble. Sublight occupies a legal blind spot. No one knows what we're licensed to do, and that gives our little business some freedom. But let's not tempt fate. Ask. I have nothing to hide. Be seeing you. Make sure you aren't followed on your way out. You don't seem to like traveling with us much. Why in the Architect's name would you say that? Grouchy. Kinda all the time? I'm not grouchy, I'm just... just... irritated by inane questions. Yeah, see, when you say it like that, it makes me wonder. C&P chicken and potatoes. At C&P, we know our c and C&P Morse Pockets. Teddy Macaroon in two and a half seconds. Morse Pockets.
No one saw me trip over that, right? How do you do? And uh, welcome to the rest and go. We used to be the go and rest, but folks never knew when to leave. Sorry. Business has been slow. Anything to occupy the time. Didn't quite catch that. Uh, you'll have to speak up. Glass ear? Sorry, there, there's a lot of static on my end. Nothing to fear. I, sorry again. The sound of Groundbreaker's engines has really got to me over the years. Huh? What? Huh. Now that I heard. Fine, as long as the board keeps its grubby mitts to itself. Chief Tennyson holds the ship together, the promenade holds our economy together, and Sublight is the shoddy jewel in our rusty old crown. Our local garbage collectors. That Lilia Hagen never met a debris field she didn't like. She freely admits she planted her roots in Groundbreaker to escape board oversight, but I think there's more to it. She's unusual in the head, that one. Our chief Tennyson has an independent streak, same as her mother and grandmother who rode this ship on the crossing. There's a reason the board's embassy is a glorified shoebox. While Junlei Tennyson lives and breathes, Groundbreaker remains free. Of course, most of our supplies come and go through merchants. Company ships and salvage runs are the only traffic we tend to get. I try and steer clear of that creepy fellow in the moon mask. If there's a cost to being a company man, he paid it in spades. Bizzo's Purple Berry Punch. You want a punch? We've got your punch right here. This is the simple truth. We are all molecular machines. The body is a collection of atoms. The mind is a consequence of chemical reactions. Therefore, our lives are predestined along a path that is only visible in retrospect. Life is fated and unstoppable. I don't know, Mr. Vicker. That seems like quite a leap. Enough new faces in the Halcyon colony. We all want new neighbors from time to time. Our studies have shown that a controlled population is inversely proportional to consumer happiness. Fewer colonists means there's more paradise for the rest of us to enjoy. This is the Halcyon Minute, your only source for news in the Halcyon Colony. Well, well, well. What fine treasures might await us in here? It's we coming. can handle this! <laughs>
This is Halcyon News. We How do you do? And uh, welcome to the rest Chief Tennyson are there our chief
Now, I don't say this lightly, but that is a work of sheer universal beauty. Either of the assault cruisers ever... 